How's it going, guys? So as promised, we're going to go ahead and do a rest of Shaman Guide. I just want to apologize. I'm feeling a little bit under the weather today. So please forgive me if I'm uh, kind of having to clear my throat a lot. So this is the uh, the outline of what we're going to do. I think this is basically going to cover everything that should be talked about with Resto Shaman. Uh, Resto Shaman was a healer that I felt like wasn't doing very well. It got, you know, a 5% healing buff. And then, you know, a couple weeks later, if not a week later, it got 15% to Riptide and 15% to Healing Stream. So after a few buffs, it, it's uh, it's ended up feeling pretty good. I still think overall the, the actual like healing that you do feels very clunky compared to Druid and Evoker. It just doesn't feel quite as smooth, but it's definitely a class that, you know, you can succeed on. Before I get started, I'm just going to say a lot of people have different opinions about Rest of Shaman. So if you don't think I'm saying the right stuff or you want to, if you want to, you know, fact check or, you know, talk to other people, get a second opinion, or if you just want to try different builds and see what I have to say compared to other people, um, you know, feel free to do that. I'm not going to sit here and say, I am the best shaman. Everything that I say goes, no one else's opinion matter because that's not true. Um, some of it could come down to the comps you're playing. Some of it could come down to uh, personal opinion. Uh, some of it could just come down to, you know, your preferences on on how you want to make the build. We're going to go ahead and talk about the uh, pros and cons of uh, Arsham, basically, and why they've kind of, you know, started to rise up on the ladder a little bit when, you know, every, I, I say on my stream all the time, I think shamans are bad healers, but they're working right now. Well, why is that? Right now, I would say the best healers in the game are Evokers and Resto Druids. Now, both of those healers have a very difficult time into comps that could purge heavily. So when you're playing the standard Shadow Priest Resto Shaman combination, you have a ton of offense with, you know, tons of purges. And that puts the enemy healers really far behind. And while they're falling behind, their teammates kind of have to retreat. They aren't dealing as much damage, which is the exact situation you want to be in a rest of as a rest of shaman. You know, you're relieving pressure, which allows you to purge more, apply more pressure, and it's just kind of this spiral effect where you know the enemy team kind of falls apart. So rest of shaman shadow priest is a really good uh, composition right now for that exact reason. You just kind of straight up counter. I don't know if I'd say hard counter, but soft counter enemy healers in a way. The pros that you have is you're still really disruptive in the casters. I mean, you have tremor. In the fear teams, you have shock, you have grounding. Now you can have uh, knock. Uh, Unleash shield is a really disruptive uh, offensive or defensive ability that has a pretty high skill cap. I feel like I'm still not quite, you know, super good at using it myself. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later in the utility. So yeah, you're you're great in that regard, and you also have like crazy offense. Like shaman offense is absolutely disgusting. I'm getting like 120 storm, 120k stormkeeper crits and stuff. There, there's a uh, there's times where I'm playing the game where I literally can just set up wins on my own with like a, you know, lightning lasso five second stun into, you know, 200 plus thousand damage worth of, uh, worth of lightning bolts. So, you know, lasso does a lot of damage and you just go ahead and send a lightning bolt, 65k, 65k. So that's a lot of damage for a healer. This is a little bit of a, I don't want to say controversial spec, but debated spec because some people think that Stormkeeper and Lasso aren't good. I think that that argument is completely valid and completely fair. And to be honest, you probably don't need to play these in every single comp or play them all the time. But I personally do like to take them um, because the risk reward feels really worth it. The biggest cons to our shaman right now is the way your healing works. Basically, if you're casting your heals, you're in a bad spot. Your casted healing is so bad. You are just an absolute Riptide bot. Um, Riptide, Healing Stream, Earth Shield. You know, as soon as you have to start casting these, you are in trouble. Um... So, yeah, and unfortunately, that happens a lot versus Cleaves. Uh, so I would say that Resto Shaman's biggest weakness right now is Cleaves of any kind. You don't have very good reactive healing. You have pretty good, like, residual healing that, you know, you kind of could keep people stable. But your burst healing overall is pretty bad. Cleaves tend to do that a little bit better. Also, they apply that uh, Mortal Strike effect, so... Those were the those are the uh, pros and cons of Resto Shaman right now. Fortunately for you, I would say that most of the teams don't re like most comps aren't really cleave. The most prominent cleave comp right now is DHDK, and I'm gonna be honest, man. When I fight that as our Shaman, I literally just want to log off. It feels absolutely terrible. Feels like I can't heal through the damage. My whole team's always dead. It's miserable. Let's go ahead and take a look at the add-ons. Um, and if you ever have any questions about add-ons, go ahead and just type exclamation add-ons in my chat. If you, you can come over anytime, if I'm offline or online, uh, it'll pop up. So details to go ahead and show you, uh, you know, the breakdown here. It's actually very, you know, handy to see what other people are doing. Nameplate buffs is what shows uh, the 
buffs and debuffs over enemies' nameplates. Um, Omni bar shows the enemy cooldowns in the middle of the screen. Omni CD shows my teammates' friendly cooldowns in the party frame. S Arena shows like the DR tracker and allows you to adjust uh, the enemy unit frames. Weak R's are really overpowered. Uh, I have a ton of them. I can show you quickly if you if you want the links to them. Just come in my chat and type in exclamation W A. Um, and it'll be under the healer weak aura package. But some of the ones that I have for shaman specifically are just if water shield's missing, if nature's guardian's on cooldown. But yeah, na if nature's guardian's on cooldown and if earth shield's missing. The elemental shield one is, is pretty handy just based on the fact that you want to make sure you always have your elemental shields up right now to uh, be using unleash shield. So it's pretty handy. Also, if water shield falls at a bad time, you could end up ooming. Um, but generally not a huge deal. And party pet fix allows the uh, pet frames to show on... Uh, on your raid frames again because those are broken we're gonna go over uh macros i don't really think i use anything crazy on shaman but i'll be happy to go over them party one dispel uh target to target frost shock we don't really play frost shock much anymore uh cursor earth grab i use that cursor for all my totems it just makes it feel a lot smoother earth bind here earth grab here uh you know spirit link here you just don't really have to do that second click ancestral guidance into my ns macro i would personally recommend this i think that they're pretty good to pair together we'll talk about that later we could do some really crazy combos with that uh cursor with totemic projection target to target lava burst um this is a help harm macro for purge and purify spirit if i target myself i use cleanse if i target an enemy i will use purge you have to have a separate line for greater purge you might be able to do this macro a little bit differently but uh this one works. Chain Heal Lightning Lasso, Help Harm Macro. We don't really use Chain Heal right now because uh, of a bug in a build. Low Tides consumes the Chain Heal before you get the benefit from Deluge, so they don't stack. If this ever gets fixed, the Chain Heal build might actually be worth it. Healing Wave, Lightning Bolt. This is a Help Harm Macro. Uh, focus Wind Shear, pretty standard stuff. Dispel Party 2, Focus Hex, Focus Purge, Dispel Self, Arena Shock 1, 2, 3. All pretty simple stuff. Uh, stop Casting on Spirit Link, Stop Casting on Grounding. Those are actually pretty useful. Stop Casting on Earthern. Uh, Earthbind, Capacitor Totem, on Cursor, Stop Casting on Tremor. The Stop Casting stuff is pretty nice because, like, if you're ever trying to, like, you know, you're casting and you want to just press Grounding, just stops your cast. If you're casting, you want to Tremor. It kind of helps you out a little bit. It's pretty useful. Target to target. Um, Flame Shock, another... Oh, this is a Shaman or a Druid Nature Swiftness. It's a little bit awkward. Another Light... Oh, that's a Focus Lightning Lasso. Probably not super important. Uh, focus on Lee Shield. I should use this more, but I, I probably don't use it enough. Uh, this is a tooltip thing, and I think that's mostly it. Nothing really crazy about Shaman macros. I would say the things that I really do like the most are just the uh, the help harm macros. They feel really nice. Uh, basically, I generally do them in my heals, so it feels pretty smooth to you know heal someone with one button and use damaging spell on someone with the same button. The only thing where that could go wrong is if you're targeting an enemy and you're trying to heal yourself, it's not going to work. So make sure you're comfortable with that and you're able to target yourself before you try and heal if you have those kind of binds there. Stat prio and enchant. So when I first started playing Shaman on beta and moving into Dragonflight, I thought that the best stat was haste. Um, since there's been some changes, I have uh, re-evaluated my stat decision and I once, once again have gone to the verse mastery verse crit. And the reason why I say that is because you really couldn't keep people alive before. No matter what you did, no matter how fast you casted, you know, nothing could save people. So I just felt like getting as many casts out as possible was great. Now, since you're only relying on your instant cast, having mastery and having crit to back those up um, seems a lot better. Uh, I still believe that verse is the best stat that you can get. Um, so I've decided to gem my stuff with verse and also uh, gem with verse. Uh, with mastery being uh, the secondary stat followed by crit. Before we go any further, I just want to say that the water that you should be using is from the auction house. It's called Delicious Dragon Spittle. It restores an extra 37,000 mana than the water you get in the innkeeper that for some reason gives like 220 or 230,000, something like that. Um, so this water is literally just better. Buy it off the auction house. Let's talk about crafted gear right now. Uh, you definitely want to make the boots, which give you 5% CC reduction without a doubt. Um, the second the second piece if you decide to craft anything is kind of up to you, you so for nice. example um, armor mail just type in inferior here um, you could make the helmet which is crit verse just based on the fact that if you want a higher item level piece and you have a blue this will be 424 in arena 
Uh, it's a completely fine piece to make if you have the gold. If not, this is this is just a temporary item. It doesn't matter at all. Uh, a lot of people are using the um, Lariat's necklace, which proc stats. I personally don't think Lariat's is going to be good on Resto Shaman. And my reasoning behind that is because I think you want to be very verse heavy. Uh, Elemental Lariat's would even out those stats, which means you would have less verse and more mastery. Which is generally not a bad thing, but what you want is more master, or sorry, more versatility. So even if you were proccing versatility from your gems, it would still be less versatility overall than you just having this fat necklace right here. So I've decided to go, uh, not go with lariats on my shaman. One last thing that you could do, and I'm not a hundred percent sure if this is worth it in the long run. I would need to see like what the stats look like with full gear, um, because eventually verse starts to diminish. So. I don't know if the item level is going to be better than the diminished versatility. It's something I would need to look at. But basically, in my opinion, and we're going to be skipping a couple chapters here. Uh, I don't... We'll, we'll talk about it here a little bit later, but we are skipping a couple chapters in order to do it. So you'd probably just go shoulders, perhaps, because it's high verse, as well as legs, because that also has verse on it. Um, meaning you could potentially, if you had gold and if you had uh, sparks... You could potentially just go for the crafted gear that gives you the stats of your choosing. For example, you can make a helmet. I think it's called the flame touch pieces. And you could just make this helmet at 418 item level if you have 10 of the concentrated focus. Um, and you can make it verse mastery. Uh, now, basically what I'm saying is the helmet right now with conquest gear would be higher verse, which is your better stat. But it would be crit, which is a worse stat than mastery. And But this would be less verse, but mastery. So you'd be sacrificing item level for verse to gain mastery. And I don't know if that's a good trade at full gear. I would need to see how much versatility we actually get to to uh, to make that decision. But in the short run, it's better than honor gear anyway. So if you have the concentrated focus and you feel like you're not going to use them on anything else, by all means, feel free to make this gear at 418 item level. And it will be a short term upgrade no matter what. You could do the same thing for every piece that doesn't have versatility. So I, like I said, I think you want legs and shoulders. You don't need the chest piece because the chest piece has verse. So you could do it on gloves as well. So you just go over here and go to gloves. There's a flame touch gloves. You'd be able to, you know, basically choose the stats that you want. You'd go verse mastery. And then that way you're kind of balancing your stats a little bit. But yeah, I don't know overall if it's worse to have lower item level and less verse for more mastery. It's probably not, but... It depends how much verse you get up to. Like if you're over like 35% or something like that, maybe, and you're like really low on mastery because for some reason male gear gives like no mastery. So you have all this crit. It, it doesn't feel as good. So this is a big one. Spec and honor talents. A lot of shaman, man. A lot of shaman playing a different build than me. A lot of shamans saying they don't think St Lasso and Stormkeeper is worth it. And there's definitely some scenarios where I can agree. So... Before we go any further, I'll say that this is my standard build right here. This is this is the build that I have liked the most. Uh, I'm actually thinking about potentially changing... Think about potentially changing this. I, I don't know if this is absurd or not. Dropping Deluge, which is 10% healing on Healing Surge and Healing Wave, just to uh, get Ancestral Vigor over Resurgence, which isn't that great of a talent. And this gives Stamina, which also buffs, buffs Earthen. Don't know if this is worth it or not. I might try it a little bit, but you could be able to see my standard build before. Basically, what I like about this build is um, I feel like this is great throughput with also great offense. Um, I feel like Nature's Guardian is something that I've sacrificed before in the past, and it just feels like it feels like one random swap can just completely take you out. So it feels kind of scuffed to not have it. We don't have improved wall here. We're kind of hedging our bets a little bit, thinking like that, you know, Astral Shift on its own is good. If you're like absolutely getting trained every single game, this is not the spec that you want to play. I'll show you some different options of specs, but uh, Totemic Surge, I've uh, I talked with Absurge a little bit. He thought it was pretty good, um, and I, I've actually ended up liking this. I've, I've gained some uh, respect for this talent, but Primal Tide Gore has great um, great synergy with Deeply Rooted Elements. You just get Ascendance procs a lot more often because you get a free Riptide. Primordial Wave is great for pairing in with your NS. We'll talk about that a little bit later in some combos, but I know some people like Undercut or sorry, undercurrent over improved earth living. I personally don't. Um, I would say in arena, this is maximum 3% healing. And that's if you have three riptides out. Uh, earth living is between four to 5% of my healing, give or take. 
Um, and with the two extra talents, without without the talents, it's like under one percent. And when these two extra talents, it goes to four or five percent. So this already feels like a three to four percent increase um, all the time. When this is a three percent increase some of the time. So I personally like uh, Earth Living more than some of the other builds. We don't unfortunately don't have room for Lava Surge. We don't have room for uh, you know this talent right here, Flash Flood. We don't have room for, but you don't. You try really hard not to cast anyway, so it feels like it's okay. Uh, Ever Rising Tide, we don't really cast anymore, so this doesn't really feel that great. Uh, we also don't have room for Focused Insight, unfortunately. You could play around with this build and try and make room for some of these, th these things. For example, like if you wanted to put these two points here and put one point here and take out Nature and only have one point in Nature's Guardian, that's a build that I played before. I personally just uh, enjoyed two points in Nature's Guardian. I think that the two points in Totemic Focus is really worth it. It makes it makes your Earthen last longer. It makes your healing stream last longer, which is incredibly significant because the longer your healing stream lasts, uh, the stronger it gets. So that it gives two extra ticks of healing stream, which is really powerful. And then yeah, overall, I just uh, I kind of enjoy having uh, Root Totem. Tremor Totem isn't needed every game. Sorry, this this point's not supposed to be here. What is this doing here? Oh, okay, this point is supposed to be Hex. Excuse me. I was playing some weird build. Um, don't mind that. that. That point right there is supposed to be Hex. I will say right now that uh, I like Greater Purge a lot more than regular Purge. It feels like you're really global luck. So to be able to throw in uh, two Purges um, when you do have that global, it feels really effective, especially into Evokers because Evokers literally have double Reversion, double Dream Breath. Greater Purge feels really good into them. Um, Ancestral Guidance, if you don't play it, is definitely a really, really good talent. You definitely want to play it. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And uh, we'll show you some. Uh, we'll show you some other builds. So I would say this is like a build I I have kind of for like living RMP openers, I guess. Basically, tries to uh, maximize the stamina you get. Um, you can do a build very similar to this without Lasso and without Stormkeeper if you want. Uh, we dropped the uh, Primal Tide Core here because generally speaking, like sub RMP and stuff like that doesn't really. You don't really need a lot of throughput. At this point, Never Rising Tide is actually useless. Uh, this could be move somewhere else without a doubt i guess this is a little bit of an old build I'm not really sure where i put this point if i'm being quite honest put that point wherever you want um elemental warding probably better risk rmp a little bit of magic damage reduction earth ellie for stam uh eight percent stam here and then ten percent stam here should be a bit tankier uh, you could also choose to and this is actually probably the better move if i'm being honest is put the chain lightning point and spirit wolf i need to update the spec a little bit and put this frost shock here into cleanse spirit so you it could go in a ghost wolf and have a 20 percent damage reduction uh now there's a another build this is my no lasso no stormkeeper build this is a little bit different oh no i think this is actually similar to what some people play basically this build right here is you saying i am not gonna have the ability to get any offense i've used this build versus dhdk uh, you're taking all the stam talents. The stam talents uh, buff earthen. So, for example, uh, you have eight percent more stam right now. You riptide yourself. You get another ten percent. You uh, rock Ellie. You get another ten percent. You have three hundred thirty-seven k. You drop an earthen. Your earthen is also uh, a little bit stronger. So, having the extra stamina is pretty nice for that earthen. This is kind of like the survive build, I guess, or. I don't know if I'd want to say max throughput build because I don't necessarily think we're gaining much throughput here. You could move these points into um, totem cooldown reduction if you want, but I'm not a huge fan of this build. Like I said, I've, I've really only played it versus DHDK so far when they're training me, so maybe that's a good option. And then uh, I have like a couple like random gust of wind builds. I don't really think uh, gust of wind is that crazy. As a matter of fact, I think it's really bad. Um, basically, melee have so much damn mobility these days that they're always going to catch you. They're always going to catch you. Uh, we fought a Shaman last night. Who was it? I think it was Cory Guns, um, where he was playing Gust of Wind to try and avoid like DK Grip Go because he felt like the only time they could lose is with a Grip. Um, so it didn't really matter what he sacrificed to get it. He just thought it was a good option. And uh, I I think that's a completely fine trade-off. But generally speaking, I think it's pretty bad. Uh, this is a no lasso build, but I still have the points for Stormkeeper. Basically, if you have a comp that has a ton of stuns uh, and you feel like you don't need lasso, this could be something viable. Uh, I don't know why I don't have Hex in this build. I guess maybe if you feel like you can't get Hex off, you probably take this out, put that there. Uh, I think that's kind of it for the builds there. I would say the, the, main, the main difference between the builds is this is my standard build, um, where I decide I, I like Lasso and Stormkeeper. Um, and I'm actually going to try out... I don't know if it's worth losing 10% healing surge and healing wave healing, but a lot of times you don't use it anyway, so the stamina might be 
better. Uh, but if you're fighting a cleave, maybe you want that extra 10% if you have to cast a lot. I'm really, really unsure about that, but yeah. Um, but I might try this. This is my standard build, and I would say that this is a more um, standard build for other shamans who don't like the Lasso or Stormkeeper. What I will say is verse RMP or some other cleaves in general, I actually really like this talent um, because when you're in Ghost Wolf and you're getting this damage reduction stacked up, if someone gets sapped on your team, you can go ahead and pre earthen and you can still keep like the uh, damage reduction up or you can go ahead and pre-healing stream or something like that for a little bit of healing when you're stunned and you get to keep the, this uh, damage reduction stacked. So it actually feels kind of nice in that regard. But generally speaking, I'm a fan of Lasso and uh, Stormkeeper. In uh, regards to honor talents, basically, if you fight anyone where you have grounding value, grounding is obviously really good. Uh, healing Tide, I would say, is a must-take every time. Used to kind of drop it before back in the day because some people would kill it. But now that you have Totemic Projection, you can kind of put it wherever you want. So it feels generally pretty good to take. I would say, uh, you know, I've I've gone between Sky Fury, Unleash Shield. Um, you know, I've played uh, Precog before. It really depends, but I think if you could play Unleash Shield and get value on Unleash Shield, it's really good. Basically, the one of the bigger changes in this expansion is you can now have uh, two elemental shields on yourself at the same time, which allows you to get double benefit out of Unleashed Shield. So the talent literally got twice as strong. Um, so you basically can either root a enemy and make him deal 50% less damage or root a healer and make him deal 50% less healing. So it's honestly really devastating on goes where you're going on a healer. It's really great on enemies where... Um, they're trying to do damage in a small window, which is like, uh, you know, there's been times where an assassination row kidneys my, my teammate. I just throw that on him. There's times where warrior spear, I throw that on him. DH's I beam, you throw it on him. You you, uh, you can stop some damage that way. Windwalker's pop serenity, you throw it on him. It feels pretty good overall. So definitely really high skill cap talent. Um, and then, yeah, if you're, if you're fighting against uh, some other stuff like... For example, if I'm fighting against DHDK where I feel like I can't really ground anything, you can't even you can't even ground like DH kick anymore. You could try and play precog, or you could try and play uh, swelling waves to get extra healing and maybe sneak a point into uh, refreshing waters with swelling waves, something like that. I actually, this is actually something I have not tested, and I'm kind of curious about it now. I don't know if these are the exact uh, exact numbers, but we can go ahead and do a little live testing here in a guide. Um, Basically, so while we're in combat here, let's go ahead and uh, test something. So a healing surge heals for 87,000. That was a crit. Do this again. Healing surge healed for 47,000. A healing wave heals for... 34,000. That doesn't make any sense. Wait, my mind is blown. What's going on here? There's no way this PP scaling is right, right? Healing Surge, 50k. Wait, am I am I trolling? Healing Wave, 35k. Okay, some something is either incredibly wrong outside of Arena, or NS NSing uh, Healing Surge might be better if you're playing uh, Swelling Waves with Refreshing Waters. That's basically. I'm gonna do a little bit more testing with this. I, I can't really do it during the guide, but one option that we have is you drop the point for Primordial Wave. You pick up Refreshing Waters, you play Swelling Waves, and um, you NS Healing Surge instead. If uh, if the healing is similar, you obviously this would be an extra 60% on that uh, on the Healing Wave. But yeah, this is this is 25% more healing on yourself and then 50% uh, healing replicated. So I would need to go into Arena and test that uh, healing difference because if Healing Wave is that bad, that's like really awkward. It might not even be worth ever NSing a... Uh, a healing wave outside of primordial so we'll have to see healing rotation for shaman is very simple keep her shield up keep healing stream down rip tide on cooldown it's super easy you want to make sure that you're always getting benefit out of your swirling currents when you're riptiding if possible so you know you can actually overlap healing streams if you if you feel a need just based on the fact of getting your swirling currents up but Basically, don't cast unless you have to. Uh, our Shaman Healing Rotation is super, super simple. Um, there's not really too much else to talk about that. Uh, it seems that Healing Wave is really bad, according to the testing that we have there. I think it's honestly buffed in PvP and it's just not showing. Um, wait, is it nerfed in PvP? What's going on? What's going on here? Some Something is really weird going on here. Healing Wave healed for 75k. Wait, what's going on here? Is Healing Wave nerfed in PvP? 
Wait a second here. Wait a second here. Is Healing Wave stealth nerfed in PvP? That should not be the case. So, outside of being in PvP combat, my Healing Wave heals for... Wait, what? When I walk in this room, it heals for nothing. Wait, what is going on here, guys? Outside of this... Am I, am I losing my mind? Outside of this room, it healed for 75k? And then inside of this room, it healed for 35k. Bro, am I losing it? Okay, ready? Healing wave. Okay, 33k. What is going on, man? How was I getting 75ks? I'm really confused. How, how did this happen, guys? How did... I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know what's going on here, man. Whatever. Alright, let's hit the dummy. Dummy on. Let's go and healing wave ourselves. That randomly healed for 62. What's going on? Why is this randomly healing for way more now? Dude, I don't I don't know what's happening. These numbers are not making sense. Literally just two seconds ago, this healed for 30,000. I have the math. I, I honestly forget the whole point of the conversation now. But yeah, let's move it on. Uh, damage rotation, very simple. Uh, you could Flame Shock if you're feeling a little spicy. You can Lava Burst if you're feeling a little spicy. But I would say the, the, big, the big spells you have are Lightning Lasso and uh, a Stormkeeper. The only thing is that those both open up your healing tree. So you just need to be a little bit careful with that. Keep that in mind. Not really uh, too much else to talk about there. Cooldown rotation. So this is something... Um, where I feel like I feel like shaman's cooldown is really not that good, but what I'll say right now is, from playing my shaman over the last couple days, week, whatever, I feel like the most important things that I can do is get an earthen out early, use a totemic recall. Let me let me respect my standard spec here and get healing tides out early. Shaman shaman to me is like all about without a doubt trying your hardest not to fall behind because it's really hard to uh it's really hard to recover so basically almost as soon as like real combat engages urban goes down totemic recall comes up and as soon as i see some sort of cooldown i don't care if it's like a fell storm a demon portal meta a abomination from dk's a void form from priest then you just get the you get the healing tied down behind the pillar and you just start doing that healing stream on cd these are the these are the first two CDs you should be using every single game. The the next CD that I generally use in um, in arena is I'm not I'm not really using wall as a CD. Use wall at your own discretion based on if you feel like you're taking damage or not. But I would say that the other rotations seem to apply. Um, I generally speaking try to uh, pair a nature swiftness with primordial wave. Uh, oh, that was the wrong thing. Pair a nature swiftness with primordial wave. And what that does is it allows your NS to heal for a ton. And your NS is now macroed in with your Ancestral Guidance. So you get a lot of healing out of this. I've died like so many times doing this. So let's hope we don't die here. So Primordial's up. Unleash is up. And then you NS with Ancestral Guidance. You get the first heal from your Healing Wave. You get the 60% from the uh, Primordial Wave. And you get the healing from the Ancestral Guidance. And if you have Riptides on your other teammates, your other teammates also get that 33k heal, which gives you more healing from that Ancestral Guidance. And um, the Ancestral Guidance just feels really good. So uh, that's why we macro NG with Ascendance. It feels pretty good. And I try to always uh, use Nature Swiftness with Primordial Wave because it's basically a buffing your, uh, your Nature Swiftness by 60% because you get that extra 60% from your healing wave, so it feels really powerful. And then Link and Ascendance are just, I guess even Arm Mastery at that point, are kind of on your, uh, on your own discretion. Generally speaking, I'd probably use Spirit Walker's Grace before Link or Ascendance. Dude, this is such an expensive spell. This is so ridiculous, 7,000 mana. And then, like I said, Ascendance and Link are really just depending on how the situation's going. If we're in a situation where I feel like I could recover with Ascendance, I'd probably use that first. If I feel like we're in a pinch, I'm coming out of a CC, I need a Link, or I, you know, if someone takes a ton of damage immediately, you need a Link, that's absolutely fine. Um, and then if you need to ascend to top people in the Link, um, that's completely fine too. Um, these are your big three minute cooldowns, but yeah. Shaman has actually felt a lot better with the, uh, the addition of Nature Swiftness, specifically because Primordial Wave makes it really powerful. Primordial, then Unleash. Don't do it the other way around. Go ahead and drop an NS, and you can see that you get the double benefit from the heal there. It's really nice. 
But yeah, it's generally how I use cooldowns. Sometimes it's not always going to be that way. You know, let's just say you're fighting against like a rogue mage. You, you don't have time to get the urban down. You don't have time to get the healing down. You just got to trinket link like right in the opener. Don't be discouraged if you have to use uh, cooldowns in a different way. Just use this as a basic guideline on how you feel like you should be pacing yourself out through the game. Mana efficiency, shamans honestly don't oom. They're, they're so broken, man. Keep water shield up at all times. Um, other than that, I really don't know if there's anything you could even talk about for mana efficiency. Um, purge is kind of expensive. Greater Purge is 8,000 if you're running oom. You don't have to do that. I'm pretty sure Flame Shock and Lava Burst are really cheap. Uh, 750 mana, that's kind of dirt. And Lava Burst is 1,200 mana. That's kind of dirt. Lightning Bolt's 500 mana. Um, I would say Purge is probably the only thing that's really going to oom you. If you're playing a Chain Hill build, uh, that's also going to oom you. But I don't think the Chain Hill build's very good right now. Um, and in my original build, I was also playing... Uh, I'll show you. I was playing this. In my original build, when I was playing Double Deluge, I also have Resurgence, which is kind of nice for mana. But just keep Water Shield up, man. Come to, go to my stream. Exclamation WA. Get the, get the Healer Weak R package. Have the Water Shield thing. Keep Water Shield up at all times. You just restore so much mana from Water Shield. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um... This is one of the things that Shaman had going for him. I didn't really talk about in the pros, but you basically never oom. Positioning as a Shaman, I would say generally speaking, as a Shaman, I feel like I'm in a very defensive position. Uh, I think that you're probably always the best kill target as a Shaman. Uh, I don't feel very tanky into anything, like even even casters. And you could do everything from like a really far range except lasso. So I would say like positioning, you're probably always in like a bit of a uh, defensive position. I don't even really feel like I push up for like hexes on healers very often. I mean, it's kind of awkward, like, you know, I'm just going to get like kicked and you're in the middle of the map. You can if you want, if you're if you're feeling a little frisky, but you can definitely move in and be offensive with your team. I was kind of talking about earlier, like playing like Shadow Priest Shaman, where you can kind of like put that team on the back foot and you could be you could be like at the enemy pillar with your team as long as you're kind of not like isolating yourself. Um, so it's totally okay to be in an offensive position as long as you're not like doing it by yourself. But yeah, generally speaking, I would say positioning is is pretty passive. I mean, you could storm keeper and just light people up from 40 yards away. But if you are playing a comp where you feel like your team relies on lightning lasso, you will need to be in the mix a little bit better. I've been playing a little bit of uh, like affliction lock shadow play where we don't really have a stun outside of like psychic horror and shadow fury. So our lasso feels really powerful for kills. So I do need to be in the mix a little bit for that. Utility uh, and CC. I mean, shamans have great utility. Like, in a casters, you have Grounding Totem. That spell is absolutely ridiculous. Stop CC, stop damage. You have Purge. Um, if you can, literally use Greater Purge on CD. Just rip two buffs off. Like, get in that rhythm. It feels really good. Uh, definitely want to do that. You have Shear. You want to, like, use Shear on CD. Like, you don't, need to you don't need to kick stuff that's, like, irrelevant, I guess. But you definitely want to make sure you're using Shear on CD. It feels really good. Really, really powerful. Unleash Shield is a really powerful utility, uh, more so offensively than defense. Like, uh, definitely look for uh, good uh, opportunities to use an Unleash Shield on a healer if you're trying to be aggressive, because that Water Shield will put him in a 50% uh, healing reduction. It's really powerful. A lot of uh, Shamans are using it. It's definitely meta right now. L Lasso is your CC. Hex is your CC. If you can get Hexes out, that's phenomenal. If not, you know... It is what it is. But yeah, and then, I mean, you also have the Stormkeeper damage. Stormkeeper is so crazy. If you're playing Stormkeeper, man, definitely look for that and goes. Um, I actually am going to play some games tonight probably on my Shaman, and I, I, I want my teammates to be really vocal, like, when we're setting up a stun, so I can, like, pre-charge my Stormkeeper and have that available as soon as we're ready to burst. I think it's really, really huge if you coordinate that with your teammates. Dealing with uh, kicks is a little bit of a tragedy on Resto Shaman. Basically, the only time I feel like I'm really struggling to deal with kicks is when I fight melee cleaves, because when you don't fight melee cleaves, the enemy team basically, or you basically don't have to cast, and you don't have to deal with kicks. This is something that is really hard to teach, but basically, try and figure out enemies' kick patterns, if they like to kick fast, if they like to kick late. And basically, I would say... Um, just try not to juke the same way. Sometimes you want to juke late. Sometimes you want to juke fast. Sometimes you can juke in the middle. Uh, try not to let enemies like figure out your rhythm of how you like to fake. And you could switch it up all the time. Uh, you know what I mean? Just depending on what you're feeling. Um, but this is this is a really one, uh, really hard one how to teach. Basically, you you really don't want to cast on Rest of Shaman if you don't have to. <laughs> Avoid it at all costs. If you have to, you have to. But yeah. How to kite well and survive? Well, I'm going to be honest. Uh, this is on here, and I feel like the only thing that this really applies to is melee cleaves, and to be honest, I feel like I cannot kite melee cleaves. I, I, I really feel like I can't. Melee have gained so much mobility over the years that 
you know they're they're running a marathon and we're just in a, a little wheelchair just you know we, we we ain't getting nowhere uh it's already basically impossible to expect us to win and even if we had it it's not going to help you just you, you really need you really need good peels uh you got to hope that earthen can do work um and you got to hope you could fake some kicks it, it is brutal uh i would say the the number one cleave right now that i fight and honestly, I don't really think there's many cleaves outside of this is DHDK. And when DHDK trains me, bro, I, I go down like a sack of potatoes, dude. I I can't help you with that one. Um, I would definitely recommend playing the uh, the no lasso, no Stormkeeper build versus DHDK. Because if they're on you, you have no shot to even ever even think about getting that off. Um, and just go in with maximum HP, drop an Earthern, prep it into another Earthern. And, you know, hope your team could just absolutely slaughter them because it's it's going to be a brutal game. Uh, offensive and defensive, I would say you're probably looking to mainly be offensive, like, when the enemy team is on a run. Uh, and you could sneak in flame shocks. You want to purge every 12 seconds when you can. Um, and, uh, you know, whatnot. But when you're doing goes, that's when you want to be offensive with, like, Lightning Lasso and Stormkeeper just to kind of sneak that damage in. Uh, other than that, I would say, like, you're generally speaking trying to just keep your team stable and allow them to push forward. So it doesn't it doesn't feel like our Shaman is as offensive as it's kind of been in the past because it feels like you're really global locked and it feels like you're kind of struggling to keep people alive. Your healing feels kind of crappy. Um, so it's more about, I would say, like, doing, uh, being offensive at the right time. It doesn't really feel like you could just kind of, like, run people over. Sometimes you can if they're just, like, completely on the back foot, but... Um, I would say mainly when you're trying to be offensive is look for the opportunities to purge on cooldown and get like your Stormkeeper lasso off. And then if you if your team is topped and you know you feel like you're in a really good position, that's when you can kind of go for those flame shocks love burst. In terms of compositions, I would say like Shadow Priest Arsham anything is like fairly meta right now. Uh, Shadow Priest Arsham is just an absolute bomb combo. Shadow Priests are pretty tanky. They help out the Arsham a lot. Uh, you have the double purge synergy there, which kind of destroys Evokers and Arjur, as we talked about a little bit. Uh, so you could definitely look to play any of that. And uh, a composition that I've been playing on my Rest of Shaman last night that I'm actually my highest rated with, and this is like really awkward, and I don't know if you're really going to be able to do this, but it was Devastation Evoker and Frost DK. And basically, it was the most ridiculous one-shots I've ever seen. Um, Mez grips one guy in, Mez grips another guy in. You have a Devastation Evoker breathing fire on all of them. I'm just casting a Lightning Lasso. I do a Zap, I do a Zap, they get strangulated. Killed healers every single game. It was absolutely disgusting. Everyone just logged off. Didn't want to queue into us anymore. It was it was honestly it was honestly broken. So that was a really comp to play, fun comp to play if you have some uh, friends that play those comps. But yeah, uh, that's about it for the Arsham man. I don't really know if this is gonna help you guys at all. I'm sorry. I I, I don't really consider myself the best Arsham right now. I guess uh, some big takeaways from this is definitely try and Primordial before you NS. That feels really good. Earthen early and often, Healing Tide early and often, and just look for those opportunities where you can help your team uh, steal some kills with Lightning Lasso and Stormkeeper. But I hope you guys enjoyed, man. Uh, Rest of Shaman is a lot of fun when you're not fighting against Cleaves because you can use that toolkit to your uh, your advantage, but when you fight Cleaves, it feels really miserable, and I'm very sorry for that. Just have a Evoker or a Druid on backup because that's what I do. Hope you guys enjoyed, man. Uh, good luck with your games. Peace. Promise that you never be lonely